Obviously, there has been a lot of talk about the coronavirus, COVID-19, and how it's impacting insurance, and what is covered, what's not covered, what should be covered. And what should be covered? This has been coming up quite a bit in the news. So what do you say we jump into it? Now, when I mention what should be covered, it's because of a couple of events that are currently going on right now. Because if you're looking at a commercial policy, whether it be the CP or a, a BOP, um, there are specific language and um, components that don't allow for coverage in, in these crazy times right now and in given situations. For example, there may not be a triggering event that makes a covered loss. Um, think about uh, not being physical damage um, or a physical loss. But then there are situations where there are civil authority shutdowns that would afford coverage in, in certain policies. Um, however, then we have exclusions. Um, the one that I can think of right now is the CP0140 um, in the standard ISO form. Um, that specifically excludes virus and bacteria. So it's unfortunate that there may be some losses that, given other circumstances, there may be some business income, extra expense coverage under those commercial policies. But that's what the contract says, and, and that's what the contract is set up for, uh, to pay for covered losses. And that's what the carriers are, uh, they wrote the contracts to cover the losses that they're expected to be covering. But now we're starting to hear about like New Jersey. They were the first to start talking about legislation about making insurers pay for losses and removing the exclusionary language when it comes to virus bacteria. And then I saw recently that um, uh, folks from Congress sent some open letters out to organizations like NAMIC and then the National uh, Big Eye requesting that folks do the same thing. They voluntarily uh, ignore those exclusions. Now, this brings me back a few years to Superstorm Sandy, where uh, the governors along the uh, East Coast started telling carriers, you know, all of those uh, wind hail deductibles, those hurricane deductibles that you have in place um, and that you've properly rated for, yeah, you can't use those um, during this event. This really concerns me because, yes, it's going to be covering for some losses that, again, should not be covered according to the, uh, uh, to the contract. And it's going to be helping out some business owners, which is, I'm all for that. I, I'm, I'm real worried about small business owners, especially uh, uh, my friends here locally in Haverhill, Mass. But the carriers are not anticipating these losses. And they use the history and all the data to properly rate um, the coverage to cover the losses that should be covered. And unfortunately, this is going to put them in some awful, awfully tough positions. I, I may get some flack about this, saying, oh, John, you're just looking out for the big bad insurance companies, and uh, they're just making uh, boatloads of money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But let's think about this if it wasn't um, the insurance industry. Let's think about another industry. Let's look at autos, okay? Um, I go into a Ford dealership. And I decide, you know what, this is the product I want. I want a Ford Focus. And we come to terms, we agree upon it, I hand over the $15,000 for that Ford Focus, and I'm all fine and good. Now, some kind of events come into play, not of my doing, not of the dealership's doing. Let's say, you know what, something to do with gas comes into play. And the government decides, you know what, Nobody should be using gas vehicles anymore. It should be strictly electric vehicles. So the government goes to that Ford dealership that I did business with. I paid the $15,000 for that Ford Focus. And they tell that dealership, you know what? Rather than giving John that Ford Focus, why don't you give him one of those brand new electric uh, Mustangs that you have? 
Give him one of those. He's already paid you. You're all set. Just give him that and change it up for the focus. Okay, so let's say that uh, new electric Mustang, um, that, to be honest, I'm pretty excited about them when they come out. But this is probably, let's say, a $60,000 vehicle. There's a $45,000 net loss right there for that dealership. Now, is that really what we want to do to that dealership? I don't think so, because it's out of their control, it's out of the consumer's control. Uh, there should be no uh, mandate upon that dealership. And that's basically what's happening in the insurance industry here, is the government is saying, although that consumer paid for this policy in this contract and to cover losses that are specifically outlined in this contract, ignore some sections of that, keep the pricing the same, and deal with it. Like I said, this makes me awfully concerned for the insurance industry. Again, it's not about me protecting the big bad insurance companies. It's about being realistic. The insurance companies set the policies, they set the rates according to what they know. And if things get thrown upon them that they're not anticipating and they're not planned for and they're not rated for, this is not gonna be good for, yes, the insurance company, but what's it gonna happen down the road too? The policies are gonna to have to spike up. The premiums are going to go up. It's gonna hurt all of us. So short term, it's gonna help out some businesses if we go down this route, but long term, it's gonna be devastating to the companies and all consumers. But let me know what you have to think. Obviously, unprecedented times, we're going to be doing unprecedented things. So I wanna hear what your thoughts are. But until then, JB out. Nah, I won't touch that. We'll social distance. JB out.